This time we're going to take a look at uh, an adjustment layer called Curves. And Curves is really probably the most powerful of all of the adjustment layers because it's really the most flexible. You can pretty much almost do everything inside of Curves if you really know how to use them. So let's go ahead and open up a file. So I'm just going to go File, Inside of Photopea. I'm going to say File, Open. And I'm going to go to my desktop and open up our location scouting. And let's see here. All right, so when we go inside of the photo uh, where again, we're gonna be working with adjustment layers. So that's down here. And one of the ones towards the top is curves. So we're gonna select curves. Now, when we get curves, basically what this is representing is a couple of things. So if we look at the curve, this is our histogram, right? And we saw this in layers, right? And what the histogram is showing is black on this side, white on this side and the distribution of values, right? So there's a few spikes of things that are fairly bright. There's a lot kind of in the middle, and then there's a few things that are kind of in that darker end, okay? And then this is a scale here that goes from, again, lights to darks. And then what we can do is we can adjust this, not just in a straight line, but to create a curve or a, you know, even an S curve or other sorts of curves in here that are going to affect those overall values, right? So, and again, like our, hue saturation, this has channels, right? So just like when we talked about additive color in the beginning, we're dealing with photographs are have channels, right? So like if I come over here to channels, the automatically it says RGB that they're all on, but there's actually three color channels that make up those pictures. And if we look here, you can see this picture is what the blue channel has, right? And then this is what the green channel has and this is what the red channel has, right? So they all have slightly different versions, but when you apply 100% red to that channel and mix them together, that's what gives us our RGB, right? So when I go back to here, when you apply a color to each of those channels of those grayscales, they become a color image. And that's based on the idea that uh, Maxwell Clerk, or James Clerk Maxwell did back in the 18, 50s, right? Um, he, when he discovered that he could take these three colors and project them onto a wall and they made a color photograph. Um, and so, and those are just colored filters, right? So that's how we get our color image. So it also has those same channels, which we'll look at here in a second. So to start with, if I wanted to start to play with contrast, I could come over here and if I drag this in this direction, it flattens out the image, right? It makes it flatter and lessens those blacks. If I drag it to the right and set it up, it makes those blacks darker. Same thing at the top, if I click on this and I drag it down, it's making it dimmer, making the highlights not quite so hot. And if I move it this direction, it makes those highlights hotter and more contrasty, right? So I can affect kind of like levels, the same thing. I can drag this in and clip it, you know, or I can drag this in and clip it, right? Same thing as, as what happened with our, um, with our levels, right? So it's basically the same as levels in the beginning, right, at the base. But what's great about curves is we can also affect the overall contrast. So we can take that middle one and we can drag it up or down, right? But it doesn't just do the middle in that way. So sometimes it might be that, well, okay, in this overall picture, I need to brighten up the, the low end, right? Because I think the highlights and the skin tone is actually probably pretty good. Um, so I don't necessarily want um, this to get a lot brighter, but I might want to open up these shadows some. So what I could actually do is put a few marks on here that'll kind of hold that bottom end. And so then when I start to adjust this, notice that top part's no longer shifting. So I could just open up those shadows just a little bit and you know start to brighten them up without necessarily affecting everything else up here, right? Now I could still go in and start to make slight adjustments and don't get crazy because, oh, crazy stuff can start to happen if you start getting um, too wacky, right? But we just want to subtly shift those. And again, I can turn this on and off. I can go, okay, well, you know, it, and again, I'm looking for a subtle change. I'm not looking for create, you know, create, completely reinventing the picture and making it this wacky color. I'm just trying to like help it out a little bit, pull and massage some of those, you know, zeros and ones to give me um, something that's closer to what it is that I envisioned as the like final image, right? So that's kind of the way that we can affect those parts, right? And again, I could still do the highlights a little bit. I could go, okay, well, they want those highlights a little brighter or a little bit dimmer. Um, but again, be really careful because it starts adding some color in there. You know, we don't need a lot, right? Now, 
the other thing that's really great about channels is these uh, the ability to start to affect those individual colors right so i can also do color contrast so let's say i wanted it to be a little bit warmer right so you know it's it's starting to get towards that blue hour there's a lot of blue sky the sun had just gone down over at buccaneer park so the sky is blue and so it's creating kind of a blue cast so i could go into the red channel and i could grab this and if i take it in one direction it's going to make it redder and if i take it in one direction the opposite of red is green so it's going to make it greener right so i could warm it up a little bit especially back in that background um it, you know and i may not want to do it a lot and i don't want my skin tone to get too much right um but again we could also do multiple curve layers and i could just affect the background and not the skin tone right for now we'll just do like one overall picture for a good you know for a curve so let's say maybe like that is a little bit better again it warms it up a little bit it brings a little bit gets rid of some of that green cast or blue back in that background part now a lot of times with like if we're trying to make like a vintage looking picture oftentimes they'll use the green or the red channel and you know kind of bring up oops these highlights so it didn't like that I shifted it that way um, but I could bring these up this way it kind of gives it like that that faded photograph look a little bit it opens up the shadows and it opens up the shadows with some of that warmth as well so sometimes you'll see you know as they're trying to make it look kind of vintagey um, you know they may go in and start to manipulate that curve a little bit um, you know maybe still bring it up a little bit in the reds over here um, but again you know that's just shifting that color cast a little bit overall um, so we can do the same thing with the other channels too. So we've got blue as a channel. So we could come in and go, well, cause blue, blue is blue and yellow. Blue and yellow is our opposite color. So if we go in this direction, it's gonna make it a little more yellow. If I go in this direction, it's gonna make it a little more blue. So, you know, and red is a mixture of colors as well. So, you know, like sometimes, you know, there might be a magenta, which is a little bit of a red blue. So sometimes I might, as I start to bring up the reds, it may have to actually counterbalance the yellows a little bit too. So I might play with that and see, you know, do I need just a little bit of yellow in there um, just to balance it back out? So, you know, again, doesn't like it when I pull it from that bottom part. Um, but again, we could bring these, you know, that open, you know, with those, make those blacks a little bit blacker, but also adding a little bit of a yellow to that black. Or we could do the same thing up here, you know, bringing a little blue into there or making those a little more yellow um, just to affect the overall contrast. So again, it's just going to be playing with it a little bit to see what the effect is, you know, that you want. And again, this is all on an adjustment layer. So I might decide eventually that I really like the color that's happening back here, but I don't really want my skin tone. So I can always come in here and using black as my foreground, again, X, I could come in and decide, well, I don't want it on here. Or maybe it's too strong and it's not that I necessarily don't want it at all, but I don't want it maybe 100%. So I could take like something like the flow and bring it down to maybe like 20% or so. And then as I start to paint, you know, I could start to bring some of that black color, you know, bring, get rid of a little bit of that extra yellow. Maybe I don't need so much in my, in my flannel, you know, and start to take away some of those areas. And again, I'm not doing it with the selection tool. You know, if I really wanted to be precise, I could also use the lasso and, and go in there. Um, you know, if it's still not enough, I could go over it a second or a third time, maybe just in the face and start to bring those back to more of a normal skin tone. And again, you can see where it's creating those, that mask and where it's affecting those colors. And again, I can turn that on and off. And so now, now it's really mostly affecting that background and not necessarily the skin tone, right? Um, so that's how we can use curves. And again, we can do that uh, multiple times. Right? I could make another adjustment curve and I could come up and say, okay, well, maybe I think the sky is too bright. So I want to bring down the sky, but I don't want to bring down everything else. So I may come in here and on this new curve, I might go to RGB to start with, and I might take these highlights and drag them down, right? That's now it's making everything darker, but that's okay. I'm going to just darken this part over here and I'm not going to worry that it's affecting this area. And then I'm going to go into maybe, let's say like blues, and I'm going to up the blue a little bit and give it a little bit more of a blue sky. A little more. Oops, come on. So green, it, you know, may also bring in a little more of that purple, like that magenta in there. There we go. 
And so once I get it to where I like, now of course, I don't want it everywhere, right? So I might just do something like we did before. Do, right now black is the foreground color. So again, option delete. Oops, let's make sure we're on the curve, option delete. So now it's black and then I can make white as my foreground, so I can X, and then I can then paint in, where do I want that color change to happen? And, you know, if I make a mistake, I can always hit X, I can come over here, you know, clean up, if I felt like it maybe made that ridge a little bit, but I don't think it actually did. Uh, I could go over it a second or a third time if I wanted a little bit darker and cleaner, you know, go over it a few times. But again, anything that we do, it's only affecting in that area over there. And so, you know, again, our eye is oftentimes attracted to that brightest area. And so if we can do some things to help kind of push those values and, and adjust them, and again, using curves, we have a lot of ways that we can affect that overall contrast, but also be able to do it selectively so that it's not affecting everything.